You smell that, Brian? I smell a mystery. Ooh. What's up, guys? And welcome back to another episode of Channel Chaser. As always, I am your host, Jay from Mr. Jay's Reviews. And joining me, as always, is my partner in crime and mystery solving, the Watson to my Sherlock, my self-proclaimed sidekick, and faithful co-host, Brian Percy. How you doing tonight, Brian? Hello there, people. It's elementary. So, yeah. We are doing a show that, that we both just praise the high heaven and absolutely love. It's probably one of our favorite new shows that have premiered this year um, in terms of freshman shows. Um, I don't and know about you, Brian, but it's definitely, my, it's definitely one of my favorites. Indeed, and I don't know about you, but it's also one of the year's biggest shocks for me. Oh, yeah. I honestly, you know, I went in with very, you know, we'll get to that in a second. But yeah, uh, to, you know, to tell you what we're talking about, if you can't already tell by this title and thumbnail of the podcast on both, you know, whatever podcast platform you're listening to or the YouTube version. Hi, YouTube people. Um, we are talking about Nancy Drew season one uh, from the CW. All right. So, yeah, let's, let's start off with uh, first impressions and stuff. But, um, you know. A little disclaimer here, we're not going to do it in the same traditional format as our normal um, channel chasers where we go character by character. Um, you won't know this because it's a lost episode, but we're going to do it similar to how we recorded in the dark, where we basically kind of divulge parts of the mystery until we get to the big twist where we got to talk about spoilers. Mm. So, uh yeah, I just I just thought about it. You're right. Uh, like in the dark, you can't really talk about it without getting into spoilers, especially certain yeah. characters. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. Uh, but before we get started with that, let's talk about some first impressions. So uh, I'll start. Uh, yeah, you know, I had, re you know, I used to read the Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew as a kid, because I'm a big bookworm, I've always loved mysteries. I read a lot of those as a kid. I, I, I like pretty much all those kid detective series, The Babysitter's Club, uh, you know, which is funny considering like Harley a couple weeks ago, The Babysitter's Club, uh, Nancy Drew, The Hardy Boys, read all of those, loved them. Uh, which, by the way, I mean, I'm sure you guys probably know this if you watch the show, but every single episode title was the title of a Nancy Drew novel. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, uh, so I, you know, I, I, I've read the books, but I, I don't ever, I don't really consider myself a hardcore fan. And I don't honestly remember that many of them. Um, like if I'm being honest, because it's been so long. Uh, but, um, you know, I am familiar with the characters. Um, and I kind of went into this like with low expectations. Uh, unfortunately, because it's a CW show, that's why I went into with low expectations. Um, and we'll talk about that definitely because this show is the one show I can point to that completely defies expectations, especially when it comes to being a CW show. Um, Brian and I are both staunch defenders of this network, despite all the network's uh, faults. Uh, but this show, I can safely say, like, does none of the usual bullshit that you would expect from a CW drama. Mm -hmm. So, Brian, uh, what were your first impressions uh, going into Nancy Drew? Well, um, I knew about Nancy Drew. I never really read it. Um, I knew... I believe my mom is a fan, and um, I knew about the different adaptations, and I had seen clips from them, like the Emma Roberts. Like the, the, like the Emma Roberts one, the really, really old TV show from, uh, was it like the 80s, or was it the 70s? It was somewhere around there. And apparently the new one that just came out. Oh, I heard about the new one, because a uh, friend of the show, a uh, close friend of mine, Corey, uh, 
he is a big Nancy Drew Hardy Boys fan, and he was really excited about this new Nancy Drew direct DVD movie because it had uh, the girl who played um, what Bev from It as Nancy. He was so excited, he bought it. Or no, he didn't buy it. He rented it. And I got a phone call about an hour and a half later of him bitching about how horrible it was. Uh-huh. Cause he At was, least. Because you know, he, he was like, I rented it for two days. I'm going to watch it by myself. And then, you know, uh, I'll, I'll bring, I'll, uh, we can, I can, uh, you can come over to my place and we'll, uh, we'll watch it together. He calls me right after. He goes, don't waste your time, bro. Don't do it. Uh, don't, don't subject me to watch this again, please. <laughs> but anyway, um, back to this though. I didn't mm-hmm. know about her, and I was, and I was a relative fan of uh, kid detective stuff. Um, Hardy Boys, um, Harriet the Spy. If you remember that. Oh, that yeah, that's yeah, that's a good one. That's even more obscure. Not, nice call. And then also the Boxcar Children. Yep. Which is similar. Mm-hmm. They don't always do mysteries, but it's similar vein. I was a big Boxcar Kids fan back in the day, Scholastic and all that. But mm-hmm. um, I did begrudgingly go in with lower expectations. I mean, um, even though it isn't, this kind of felt like it might be another... Like Riverdale or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and but like you know that that's uh, but it wasn't made by it wasn't made by you know Roberto. Not to no offense to Roberto, it was just what, the showrunner was one of the producers on Riverdale, I believe, or worked on it. So it's not connected, and the trailers and promotional material gave off that vibe and. Um, Let's just say Let, our current Riverdale opinion is not that positive. So. And also, let's just say that um, they even in the trailers hint at there being more to the story. And uh, let's just say with Riverdale, when they got to their darker stuff, that's when... It went to the shitter. Let's be 100% real here. It went to the shitter. Mm-hmm. Um, but thankfully, uh, this this show expertly avoided that. Um, you know, uh, this isn't a major spoiler, but I did I do want to tell you guys, you know, who are maybe watching this on Netflix because it's out now, um, and haven't checked it out yet. Uh, Nancy is a lot more supernatural than you would expect. I mean, uh, the like the premise slightly hints at it. Like if you read like the IMDb summary or whatever, um. But it is way more supernatural than like you, um, I expected at like in general. Now, um, like, granted, the Nancy Drew series has always had like the the supernatural leanings to it, but I didn't expect them to like explore it that deeply. And when I say supernatural, I don't mean like a legacies type of supernatural, more no. of, like a like uh, a, a like. Acknowledgement of spirits, supernatural is all I'll say um, before we get into the spoiler section. It's it definitely it's not, it's less monster focused and way more in the spiritual afterlife section of supernatural like, stuff. Like the the supernatural part is like an element to the show, but it's not the main focus. Mm-hmm. But it is a driving force, and it is an integral part of the show nonetheless. It's not superficial either. It is very, very important to the show. Like, don't mm-hmm. get that twisted. And um, uh, two other fun facts. Um, I just pulled up the, the Wikipedia. Um, the This has the same showrunner as the Gossip Girl. Yeah, um, Naga Landau. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, or Nova Landau. Uh, little Stephanie Savage. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and Stephanie Savage. Yeah. Um, and uh, she and the other the other showrunner, because there are two. Mm-hmm. Well, Naga, Stephanie, and a guy named Josh, three of them, working together. And uh, Josh and Stephanie worked on the OC together. So Yeah, which makes sense. 
And um, also, uh, this is apparently, I didn't know this, the mm-hmm. third TV adaptation of Nancy Drew. Yeah, uh, I, I know there was a, like like I said, I know there was the one in the, like, in the 70s, well, like, mm-hmm. the 70s and 80s. And um, wasn't even Nancy Drew, it was Hardy Boys Nancy Drew Mysteries. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then there was a 90s cartoon. Yep, I, I, I remember watching the cartoon. I remember watching the cartoon. Uh, because that, that came on, I want to say, like, PBS Kids. One of the, like, one of the, like, cable networks, if you didn't, uh, not one of the cable networks, but one of the, like, the local networks, if you didn't have cable, and I didn't have cable, grow, uh, like, when I was, like, really young, so I, I watched a lot of those. It came on the same channel that, uh, like, featured, like, Carmen Sandiego and mm-hmm. shit like that. So was it educational? It was a little bit, like, not necessarily, like, in the same sense of, like, a Carmen Sandiego, but, like, you know, it more more or less taught you, like, critical thinking and, like, okay, so let's piece this together. They, it was, it was kind of, like, not this, this is a weird example, but, like, you know how, like, um, Dora the Explorer has, like, the, the pause and, like, you know, where's the thing? They kind of mm-hmm. had those moments in that show where it's, like, all right, so... There's this and this happened. So, who could the possible suspect be? And like you know, it would pause for the kids to like think about it and like you know piece it together. Uh, they present the clues at the end, kind of like in a blues, like in a like an older kids' blues clues almost. Huh. Interesting. And you know, it is kind of it is kind of coincidental that both shows had a reinvention about the same time. Yeah. Except one's uh, still animated. The other one um, is live action now. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, so um, it's it's a really good, you know, it's a really good show. Uh, probably the like the driving force and the 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 biggest selling point of the show itself is its characters. There is not a single character in the main cast that I don't like, mm-hmm. if not outright love. I mean, I outright love the and, entire main cast. And, uh, funny enough, they're all relative unknowns. At least the main crew are. Yep. Also, also, just a little fun behind the scenes. Uh, not not with us, but with the show. Um, when it was still in per- early production, um, the dad was n- uh, was actually going to be played by Freddie Prince Jr. Mm-hmm. But due to scheduling conflicts, Freddie had to um, drop out. Or was it was or was it something else? It was something else. Oh, what was it? They they said that uh Oh, it was it was a was it a testing thing, right? Like yeah, it didn't feel right? Yeah, mm-hmm. it it didn't he didn't feel right, which um knowing where, now where they went with the show I can kind of see how Freddie Prince Jr. doesn't fit that. Yeah, I mean, not to say that he has isn't able to tackle serious roles, but he has too much of a like charm overall. Yeah, yeah, charm and like fun-loving attitude. Like he doesn't seem like the keep a secret type of guy like Carson is supposed to be in this show. And uh, without spoiling. The kind of semi, yeah, mm-hmm. darker the place kind of... that they go with mm-hmm. Ryan. I well, mean, with uh, honestly, Carson. with Carson. Honestly, you know, n- not to not to disparage the actor, and you know, we'll get into this when we when we get to that particular character. But I could honestly have seen Freddie Prince Jr. playing Ryan. Oh yeah, I could totally have seen that. Which, by the way, um, Ryan in the show is another not a teen movie alumni. Yep, not another teen movie alumni. That was great. Then, personally, that is my favorite teen movie of all time. Like, and there's so many huge stars in there. Like, Mm -hmm. well, they're huge now, but like, you know, Mm -hmm. it's it's great. Mm -hmm. Still my favorite. Like, I know, like, you know, Marvel has blown him up, but that is going to always be my favorite oh, Chris Evans performance. Crap. 
I didn't realize this. What? Ryan is the dude that uh, uh, Lucy Hale guy. Yeah, you didn't know that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. From uh, Kate Keen. Yeah. Somehow, Kate Keen. Life sentence. Life sentence. Yeah. Somehow life he's sentence. a lot less punchable here. Yeah, he's the he's the life sentence doctor. Uh, I I noticed that when you first showed up. Uh, hmm. Because I. Uh, but yeah, um, I so... guess I guess uh, third time's the charm. Knock on wood with him because he was also I in mean, frequency. Yeah, he was the he was the dad. He was the dad. Yep. Yeah, which like by the way, side tangent. That show was great. Uh huh. Had such an interesting premise, such an interesting use of time travel that I had never seen anywhere else. That was the reason I like I had to wait on In the Dark because the last time I I had a really cool, awesome, unique premise show on CW. It got canceled after the first season on a cliffhanger, no less. Mm-hmm. So that's why I had to wait. But yeah, side tangent over. Um, yeah, so, um, where, where should we, what, what's the, what's the point that is the least spoilery to start? Which character? Well, um, this doesn't spoil anything, but, uh, fun fact for you, which mm-hmm. kind of starts into this, episode one, they go view, and they go to a psychic for help. Oh yeah, and that isn't that psychic like the original Nancy Drew, like from one of the old adaptations from the seventies TV show. Yep. Mm-hmm. Pamela Sue Martin. Yep. Which, okay, so uh, which I wish yeah, they would have done more with her, but yeah, she. But you know, I guess they had George's mom, so they didn't really need her as much. But George's mom was barely used to. Uh, so. I guess we can start by talking about like what initially opens the show. Um, and it's like, it's a combo double murder, but one's an older unsolved mystery. And then one's a current one. So, yeah. Because investigating um, one leads to the other. Mm-hmm. The inciting incident of the show uh, is the uh, murder of one Tiffany Hudson, the uh, wife of, you know, uh, rich socialite, rich, rich town socialite, Ryan Hudson. Um, and basically, Nancy being the uh, girl detective that she is, when, you know, a murder happens in her hometown, which she has, you know, just come back to after um, either dropping out of college or finishing college or doing or taking a gap year. I don't remember one of those. Um, but. Uh, she comes back to her hometown um, and uh, is working part-time at a uh, seafood restaurant, The Claw. Um, and basically, you know, Tiffany and Ryan and some associates come in and, you know, they, del- they, you know, they deliver food and then all of a sudden um, Tiffany Hudson dies. And so naturally, um, since the last place they were at uh, before she died was the restaurant, all the people who work at the restaurant are suspects and they're questioned. And, you know, Nancy being a, uh, like a seasoned detective, quote unquote, with all her, like, you know, childhood experience. Yeah, um, because apparently she is a former kid detective in yeah, the universe. which makes it, yeah, which makes sense because, like, all her adventures as a kid or all her adventures in the book, she's like, Age, she's like age 12 to 14. I think by the end of it, she's like 14, 15. Yeah, but she's not exactly on the up and up with the local sheriff who yeah. he has a history with. Because, uh, you know, the, the chief, he, he uh, he's kind of, he's really annoyed by her because she gets, um, as a kid, she used to constantly get in the way and like involve herself in investigations when she didn't really need to. Um, and, and um, so, like, she kind of, as an adult, has, like, been very adversarial, to quote her, 
she was doing his job for him. Yep, and she, you know, she's you know gone as far as like broken in to the station multiple times, like stolen evidence to examine it, other shit like that. So you know, she's not a she's not a goody two shoes detective. She's very Jessica Jones in that way, uh, um, minus the alcoholism and some of the traumatic past. Oh yes. But don't get it twisted. She definitely has a traumatic past because it's a CW show and she's a protagonist. All all CW protagonists at least have somewhat, some kind of trauma in their past. Mm-hmm. Uh, Which, do, in this case, also does include one dead parent. Yeah, so she's she checking all the... She, you know, I said that they avoid some of the CW tropes, but some of them are just, you know, to quote Thanos, inevitable. Mm-hmm. Um... Uh, but yeah, so um, we got so we got that uh, so we got that whole setup, and so in, at first she does it just to clear her name and to clear the names of her coworkers, um, who aren't exactly her friends to begin with. They're people she went to high school with, um, but they aren't exactly friends. And all oh well, people people she went to high school with, and this this random girl who moved here, and uh, her boyfriend. She also went to she also went to school with him. Yeah. But he was a year ahead of her. Yeah, true. Uh but all of all of the people there have like an iffy relationship with the law. Yep. For one reason or another. Um, yep. Like uh, you know, this doesn't go into like many spoilers, but like George, for example, like her experience with the law is mostly dealing with her mom because her mom's an alcoholic so she has to get her from the drunk tank a lot Mm -hmm. and deal with DUIs and And such. And then you've got Nancy's boyfriend Nick who went to prison for something. Yeah, yeah, who is a a convicted felon and we find out what that crime is, um, you know, as we dig deeper into the mystery, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, Then we have Ace who... His relationship with the law is more direct. His his pops was a cop, actually. A reti- he's a retired cop. Um, and actually a, a pretty big deal around the force. Um, but because he was like he was like a, a legend back but then. But Ace himself has gotten into trouble with the law a little. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, because of his connections with his dad, like most of the time they've looked over, you know. What, what he's been doing. Um, and he is like the traditional like hacker type techie. And uh, then you've got Beth who who is like a mystery for mm-hmm. like the first few episodes. Like there's something mad shady about her and like you know you see in the first episode that she's a klepto. Um, so like there's definitely, you know, something suspicious about her. And uh, um, that's that's our main crew. I mean, there is also tangentially Tiffany's husband, Ryan, who's also a suspect. Because apparently back when yep. he was a teen, he was kind of like local bad boy. And, um, you know, there's um, he is connected to the other case... That Nancy has to investigate um, due to some supernatural interference. So once the whole thing happens with Tiffany Hudson and Ryan, it triggers a series of events that leads to Nancy being haunted by a ghost. Um, But not just any ghost, one of the biggest local legends of the town. Uh, But not like so like so far back that it's ancient. It's actually relatively recent, about 20 years ago. Uh, but uh, that ghost is, of course, Lucy Sable, the Sea Queen, who, uh, like, apparently, like, died um, the night of her big ceremony. Um, she was queen no for a knew, day. No one knew. And no one knew how or why, but she just died. And, you know, people speculate that she was murdered, a bunch of other things. Uh, but no one's been able to solve that case. And... The reason Ryan's connected to that is because Ryan is a big suspect because, uh, you know, he was her boyfriend. 
and you find that out pretty early in the series as well. All right, so uh, when so, do we want to jump into spoilers? Well, we, we've been going about 25 minutes. I feel like that's an inappropriate amount of time. We gave you guys the basic setup without spoilers. So basically, all throughout, like, well, in the first half, it's all about, you know, the, the first half, it's mostly about the Tiffany Hudson case. And by the end of the first half, we solve that case. But evidence and things that we find during the investigation of the Tiffany Hudson case unearths more things about the Lucy Sable case. And then the second half is all about Lucy Sable and her mystery. And, you know, uh, like all throughout sprinkled within that are different like supernatural elements and dealings with the supernatural um, in order to get answers um, for various situations. So, yeah, that, that's your spoiler summary of uh, Nancy Drew Season 1. Now let's get into some spoilers. Rah, rah, um, rah. Keep in mind, if you haven't watched the show, uh, we are going to be, you know, spoiling the mystery. And honestly, like, you should watch it because experiencing those twists is kind of crazy. And there are more um, twists than first meets the eye. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so, let's start with Nick, uh, because he's probably the most simple to knock out. So, uh, we find out, uh, pretty early on that Nick, um, killed someone on accident. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and so he went to jail for it, and Tiffany was actually the witness that put him in jail. But then... Uh, once she started visiting him and like getting to know him and becoming his friend, she realized, oh no, um, you know, you were innocent. You didn't mean to do all that. I'm sorry. I I should have, you know, I should have, you know, thought that through more. Um, she kind of blamed herself for, you know, getting him put behind bars. Uh, but their friendship is what helped keep him sane. Yeah, she even tells him that she was the one who did it. Even though it was blind. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so, um, like, well, of course, Nick has a vested interest in solving the Tiffany Hudson case because Tiffany was his close friend. Um, and, you know, Tiffany actually leaves him a fuck ton of money. <laughs> yeah. Um, she was, like, one of the few people that actually, and, like, befriended him and was nice to him. Yep. And believed in, and mm-hmm. believed in him. And... Um, and she was such good friends with him that she left him a crap ton of money. Yeah, like millions and millions of dollars. And I think that was one of the first episodes that, like, really... That, that was the first episode that officially made it for me, like, okay, this is going to be a great show. Because, like, the, one of the sub-mysteries, the, the finding Tiffany Hudson's, like, money and files that felt like national fucking treasure and mm-hmm. i was like oh you guys you're, you're hitting the sweet spot for me i love uh, those movies and oh, they had to go shit. to that weird house that's like a museum thing with all those mm-hmm. creepy photos mm-hmm. yeah the historical yeah. society place yeah yeah uh, so yeah um eventually you know um nick gets cleared um he, he gets the money he ends up using the money to help the claw out because, um, you know, he did work as a mechanic, but then stuff happens and the garage he works at is shut down. Yeah, so, also, because um, I feel like we need to mention this, him and Nancy have the a... Yeah, they have a thing at, in the beginning and, you know, it, it's cute, uh, you know, but eventually they kind of just have an amicable amicable breakup where it's just like nah you you don't seem to be into this and that's fine um, honestly i don't you know i don't blame you. you you know you got a lot on your plate uh we can still just be cool and that's one thing that i loved about this show like that swerves mm-hmm. cw expectations i always have to defend the cw because, um, like, not to go on too big of a tangent, but uh, an acquaintance of ours, somebody we know, like, for example, 
Like when Superman and Lois was announced, they went went on this whole ass tirade, and they were like, "Watch, Clark, um, Clark is gonna like end up Lana Lang's gonna come back into this show, and there's gonna be a love triangle or whatever between him and Lo- between Lois, Clark, and Lana, and it's gonna be a whole thing. Or Cat Gr- or Cat Grant is gonna do is, is gonna be involved again somehow or something like that. No, so with Nancy Drew, none of that happens. They treat it like normal, actual people. Like, sure, they deal with supernatural shit, but they actually handle things like regular yeah. people would. They break up, and they stay friends. Because you can be friends with your exes, as long as they don't, you know, do anything crazy. And neither of them did anything crazy to each other, to the point where they'd be like, fuck you, I don't want to Yeah, and you. also, um, I just want to add that they also subvert expectations, because... They start off with them together, and CW shows don't really do that. They start off with mm-hmm. everybody. Yeah, the, yeah. They, they they usually do like a will they won't they for half a fucking season, and then or or sometimes in the case of <clears throat> fucking Supergirl, an entire season only to drop it within the first episode of the. Now, to be fair. Now, to be fair, that's also because they switch networks. Mm, it's it's because they switched networks and they because they've openly admitted this and they didn't know what the fuck to do with them. Yeah, true. Uh but but um but yeah, yeah. um so like th- yeah, th- they're cool all throughout and you know when each of them finds another relationship later on, both of them are like, "Oh yeah, cool." You know, I support you as long as you're happy. There is a little awesome. bit of questioning on one hand where he's like, were you into him when we were together? But which is a va- which, yeah, which is a valid point because, you know, they were still together when she first started ogling. But they know? don't really make it too much of an issue. And, you know, I'm I'm also glad they did an episode that like dealt with closure for that relationship the box episode Mm -hmm. like that was a a nice way to put a pin and you to finally be like now we're good now we're finally done yes and also it kind of swerves expectations because Nick is the go to love interest for Nancy in all other mediums Mm -hmm. Nick Nickers which I uh, yep which I thought was cool, uh, I, and I understand why they they don't go Ned by Nickerson, Ned this sorry. time because N- Ned N- Ned sounds Ned sounds oh no his name is Nick in this show because Ned sounds too old old timey Ned's like an old yeah. man name. Ned. So like whenever I hear the name Ned, I think I think of either Flanders or Ned Bigby from Ned's Declassified yeah. Survival Guide. Um. But yeah, so um, that's Nick. Uh, he, you know, each and you know, one thing I will say, like that's just true for the entire main crew. No one is unimportant. Everybody has big moments. Like no one's just a side character in this main. Like ensemble. there are, I will admit that um, there are some people that you think are going to be smaller, but then make a bigger splash later on. Mm-hmm. Now, oh, there are characters connected to our main crew that I wish we would have seen more, like George's whole family. Uh, but, like, you know, that's understandable. We needed to focus just on, like, speaking George of, does Nick crew. have any family? Uh, um, he had he had a he had a brother, and his parents lived here, but then they moved after he went to prison. Uh. Mm-hmm. Just wondering, because I know, because th- that's another thing yeah. that kind of subverts expectations with like CW and all that is uh, they are adults. So yeah, um, uh, yeah, I, like uh, they, I, they mentioned in the very beginning, like his brother moved after graduation, and then after he went to prison, um, the parents moved because they didn't want anything to do with him. That's right. I remember now. Mm-hmm. Yep, because, like, 
they they thought they thought he was a monster because you know yeah. he committed murder. Uh, um. So yeah, that's 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 Nick's character, and um, you know he's great. All of them are great. Um, and uh, you know I think the coolest thing about this show is that like they do some interesting like character matchups when they like have to split the party. It's never just a Scooby Doo where it's like. Fred and da- Fred, Daphne, and Velma are always together, and Shaggy and Scooby are always together. No, sometimes you get Nick and Nancy. Sometimes you get Nick and George. Sometimes you get Nick and Bess. Sometimes you mm-hmm. get Nick and Ace. Even though you don't get, I I wish we got more Nick and Ace. But mm-hmm. That's the one I would would have liked to see more of. But the you know the moments we did get with them were great. Um, so yeah, that's Nick's character. Let's move on to Bess. Okay, so Bess, she was she was a she was a big. Did not see where they were going with her. No, at all. Okay, so which which is hilarious because okay, so real quick, um, Bess, like I said, she starts off as like this kleptomaniac character. Um, she seems pretty shady. We find out she's living in a van. Um, and so it's just like, you know, what is her deal? And then we find out that, uh, she is actually from the UK and she's a member, a, like a lost member of this elite rich family, uh, from Horseshoe Bay, a Marvin, um, mm-hmm. Marvin, which, um, so, and so, so funny story about that real quick, uh, like, I like I looked what when, when the show first started I looked up that particular actress because I thought she was like really fucking hot. Mm-hmm. Um and I found an inter like I found an early interview like talking about Nancy and she had a British accent and I was like holy shit why don't they just let her why don't they just let her use her regular accent? Katie McGrath gets to, you know, indirectly use her regular accent. Just let her use her regular accent. And then lo and behold, she just, uh, like, once that's found out about her, she just drops the American accent, and we get, like, awesome British, natural British which was, accent. Which was so yes. funny, though, because it's like, once they found out the secret, she's like, oh, thank God. And then she starts talking in the British accent. Right. And she hides it from some people yep. to begin with for a while. Yeah. So it's first, like yeah. one scene she'll be American accent, one scene British, but then Which is which, you know, seriously though, like Katie McGrath, I love you, but take notes from freaking Bess's actress. Like seriously. Like also, get her to teach um... you. <laughs> because you say the word Kara a lot, and that is what breaks your also, accent. Also, by the way, just real quick. Apparently, uh, Bess is the most, like, I think, seasoned actress of the main crew. Uh, she was a cast member in Into the Badlands. She was oh, Odessa. Sweet. Nice. I never watched... I didn't watch that show personally. My dad was a big fan, but yeah. nice. Um, but yeah, so, you know, she is... The um, you know, she wants to get in with her family, and so that's her whole. Because at first, she doesn't know if she is adjusting to high society life one or not. Because her mom's kind of not all there. Yeah, and she's she's kind. Her mom herself is kind of shady. Also, um, do I believe her? Yeah, and and you know, kind of similar to like a Roswell, where like you know. Usually, CW would take entire seasons to solve this plot, and like you would find out in the end of the mid season, is Bess a Marvin? We find out in a few episodes mm. after it's revealed that she's possibly a Marvin. They meet, they meet uh, Nancy's other love interest, and Owen. he's like, Yeah, Owen, yeah, they meet Owen. He's like, All right, I'll he's give you like, I'll, I'll, He's I'll like, you, you could out. be, I'll give you, you could be a Martin. All right, bet I'll help you out and fund the DNA test. And then next episode, yep. yep, you're my cousin. <laughs> yep. 
um, because you know, because he, he knew he knew about uh, he knew about his aunt that like you know went like that went either went missing or just kind of disappeared from the family. So it, it lined up. So he was like, "No, nah, I believe you. Let's let's go ahead and do this. I'll help you." And, you know, at first he does it for as a like to earn brownie points for Nancy, but also mm-hmm. he's genuinely. Because I mean, come on, who wouldn't be with someone being like, "Oh yeah, I'm your secret cousin." Yeah, this 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 really attractive British girl is like, hey, so I, I might be your cousin. Is, is it cool uh, if you if I like I use your DNA as a as a sample to test against to, to see if we are related? It's like, all right. Um. So yeah. Um. She's kind of are into the like the high society world, which plays a big factor, especially in the Tiffany Hudson case, but most especially the Lucy case. Um later on and um uh, you know she also discovers her uh, sexuality uh, over the course of the show she finds out that she's gay um and uh you know at first ace has a huge crush on mm-hmm. her because you know why wouldn't he and but like when she, when uh she like admits when she like comes out to him and she's like you know I've never really been attracted to people but like all, but like when she ran into Lisbeth she's like but I like her I like her a lot and she's like oh you're gay oh. cool and then um, they became best friends this will make sense if you have seen it but a spoiler alert for stranger things this Definitely, their relationship definitely gave me a Stephen Robin. Uh, yeah, Stephen Robin. Yeah, exactly. Stephen Robin. Word. That's what I was thinking too. Yeah. Um, they're like, and they even refer to each other as like, um, like I'll be your plutonic anchor. You know, I'll I'll be your friend. You know, I'll be your friend yeah. that holds you down no matter what. And they they have one of the strongest friendships within the. I mean, all of the main crew have strong friendships between each other, but their friendship and Nancy and George's friendship Yeah, and I like it. The, and I like it. how he kind of has a similar thing to like Steve, where Steve was just like you're into her? Like, not, oh, crap. Right? He's just like, you're you're into her? Yeah. It's like, yeah, like, you know, I, I love Steve. He's Steve was like, you could have done a lot better than that. And oh, Ace, but, like, Ace is just like, well, that sucks, but I still want to be your friend, so. Yeah, I can still be, but yeah, I'll still be your friend. That's cool. And, you know, I'll keep your secret, too. Like, you know, if, if, you, if you're not ready to tell anybody, then, you know, we can just keep it between us. Yeah, I'm Ace fine. is really good at keeping other people's secrets. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. he's kind of used to it. <laughs> And and also like you know he's been judged his entire life uh, about you know things with his character and I guess this is a good segue for him. Um, so like he he isn't one to judge anybody. Like with Nick's whole background coming out, he's like, oh no, it's fine, man. I get it. Uh, and then like with George, you know, uh, like in her her relationship with her mom, he's like, no, I totally understand, dude. Like I mean, you know, both my parents, both my parents are like. I don't necessarily have experience with that particular thing, but I understand parents being a hand, handful. And so also it's, it's with cool. Nancy, uh, Nancy has a big, I don't know if we want to reveal it yet, but anyway, he finds out about it, and he's just like, you don't want to talk about it? Fine. But I'm here. It's fine. And I'll keep um, your secret for you. You know, but, but, but you know, I'll... It's like if you, but if you need to talk about it, we can talk about it. And, you know, I'll be here for you whenever you feel like you're ready to tell everybody else because everybody else also deserves to know. That's the thing about um, Ace. He's the, Ace is Mm -hmm. the sweeper hit of all the characters, right? Like, he's the one that Brian was talking about where you you think he's just going to be that small character. He's just the tech guy. He's the guy in the chair that helps you collect all the, you find out, you find out early on that, uh, he, he's secretly working with the police, but then you find out that it's it's a black male. Mm -hmm. And, And then you find out that like, he, he has this like, romance with Tiffany's younger sister who is also like ridiculous mm-hmm. 
And he almost, like, she offers to take him to Paris. And I'm just like, you know, Ace, like, I get it. Your friends are here. And I respect your decision. But if I were you and someone was funding a free trip to Paris, and they looked like that, oh. I don't know, man. I, 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 would, I would help my friends. Also, chat. Zoom. <laughs> but also, uh, I love that a smaller thing that they don't really focus on is the fact that Ace knows ASL because of his father. Yeah, because his father ended up deafened in, I think, yeah, a Yeah, something like that. Something? It was, I believe it was the the incident that made him have to retire. But, so, yeah, yeah. Just... Mm-hmm. It, it, it was, it was, it was tracking down the murder, it was tracking down the murderer, like, that, uh, that Nancy caught as a kid, um, the one that led to the, to the, 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 the unsolved episode with the poison shit. Oh, yeah. That was it. And I want to say that was and... it. And... So he just knows ASL, and uh, they don't make a big deal about mm-hmm. it. But he talks to his dad in ASL, and also I do love it though because uh, the dad is seeing Ace like get into mystery solving and like asking questions gets the dad all riled up, and so the dad like goes back to work and is starting working with the police again in a new way. Yep, but it's like a yeah, but as like a consultant and a PI almost. Not exactly a PI, but more of a consultant. Um, but yeah, so that's Ace. All right, so let's go to Ooh. George now. Um, all right, so George is kind of the source of all... She of also the is ideas. another, um, uh, like, Ace person that you don't really suspect in the beginning. Because in the beginning, she... She looks like she's going to be like the next Lizzie Salzman or something like that. No, no, honestly, like, honestly, right off the bat, I was like, oh, she's going to be yeah. a bitch with a heart of gold. She's a bitch with a heart of gold. I can smell it. I can smell it. That's my favorite character arc. I'm here for it. And on, her turnaround was super fast. And I'm like, you know what? Sometimes you don't need to be, you don't need to be, take forever. If it happens, it happens. Because George is a very understanding person if you approach her with facts and logic. Uh, and when she realizes, like, that Nancy never really hated her, it was more of just, like, Nancy doesn't know how to... Well, work. also Nancy <laughs> apologized. Yeah. Um, and so, like, you know, George and Nancy develop a really, really good friendship to where, like, you know, Nancy does the typical hero thing that all CW protagonists do, where they're like, nah, it's getting too dangerous. I don't want you guys to get involved because I don't want to see you guys get hurt because I, you know, started to care about you guys now. And George is like, nah, fuck that. We're not gonna let you go in alone. Um, you know, we're in this too. Mm-hmm. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're, we're, we're riding this wagon so yes. we'll fall off. And, uh, you, um, you talk you and talk about moments that's great. that, uh, like, convince you about, like, how good this show is? Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This was, I was planning to make this a whole segment. Um, so, we find out that, uh, you know, in the beginning, that um, she is having an affair. I wasn't even going to talk about Hudson. that. Um, that. That was the most. I, that was, I, that's I know, but I was just saying show, turning point. But, Early on, the show for me was the episode where George mm-hmm. gets possessed. Oh, that was amazing! Yeah, th- th- that was the uh, episode where I'm like, "Oh, they really know how to do horror on TV," which is extremely difficult. The only show that I've seen other seen other than Nancy that does horror well on TV is Haunting of the Hill House. No. Now, this is nowhere near that level, but it's still it is, and, scary, I, and I like. love it though because. Oh, uh, one of the one of the pitfalls for the show Supernatural, at least early on, was every time they'd encounter a new case, they'd be like, "Are you sure this is supernatural, or is this just some guy?" And in this show, everyone who witnesses the supernatural gets possessed. After that, they're just like, "Bet it exists." I don't, just rolling with it. Yep. 
and I and I, and I love the the joke between Nancy and George, and where Na- Nancy ends up being haunted like further, and she goes, "Wait, so I got possessed, and now you're being haunted? Are you trying to one up mm-hmm. me now? Is this a competition?" Um, but yeah, no, it's great. We find out George's mom is a medium, and so she's the one that like get like is the exposition dump for all the spiritual stuff. She helps them deal with all the different ghosts and spirits that they have to deal with over the course of the show. Um, she helps them deal with Ace when his spirit gets lost in limbo after being severely injured. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, you know, it's really Wait. awesome. Um, and also, really fun little, just small naming convention. You know, obviously, uh, George's full name is Georgia, but she goes by George, and the entire, her entire family, like her siblings, but also have, um, like, female, like, their full names are, you know, traditionally female, but their nicknames are all, you know, traditionally male. And they don't make a big, like, woke deal about it, right? There's like, look at us bending the gender norms. No, it's just, her name's Ted, and I forget the other sister's name. Um, but it's Ted, I think Lou, right? Lou, maybe? Something like that, but also... One one we get to see more of, but still both we don't really get to see too much of. But what we do get to see of her sisters, I like them. Oh yeah, they're great. Um, like the the episode where Ted gets kidnapped, that was I was so yeah. worried for Ted. Uh, but yeah. So back to what I was saying earlier. So, um, we find out in the beginning of the show that uh George is having an affair with Ryan Hudson and has been having a, an affair with Ryan Hudson since she was 17 years old. Gross. Um, on Ryan's part, not George's, because George George is a kid being manipulated oh, by this yeah. grown-ass man. Um, and so, what? The, this is the trope I hate the most out of anything on teen television, is whenever like the young girl gets like manipulated into this a relationship with a significantly older man. Now granted it happens in real life, I get it. But that doesn't mean it's not gross and it doesn't piss me off. Ezria. But, but another just fantastic so yeah, I was gonna say another fantastic subversion of this trope. And this is just something that I, I really fucking needed. Um you know George and Ryan obviously break things off after Tiffany Hudson's murder. They seem to be all right. Like, it's awkward at first, but they seem to be okay. But then it comes to a point mm-hmm. where, like, George and her relationship with Nick, which develops later, um, is affected by Ryan because, you know, she was always the side piece. She, was, she always had to hide her feelings and keep everything a secret. So she... Doesn't know how to like Nick goes express. to hold her hand and she jerks Love away and in public. Mm-hmm. Yep. So she finally confronts Ryan and you know tells him like, "No, I'm not saying not this wasn't my fault either, but I can't also deny that you manipulated me. I was 17 years old." Um. And I, I thought for some reason that I could be swept away by this handsome, charming, rich white man. And it's cool, though, because he then goes, yeah, I messed up, but I was going through. And she stops him and he's like, no, you don't get to have an excuse. I was a child. I I fell in love with you, and you just pushed me aside. And I believed that you would you would eventually choose me, but you didn't. And you know what? That's fine. I'm glad you did because I found someone who will. But because of you, and because of like how you treated me, I can't treat him properly. So I need to let I need to finally let go of mm-hmm. you, dude. You do not know how I I I legit clapped. I I gave that scene like legit applause. Do you do you know how crazy I would have went if Lucy Hale got yeah. that moment? Because oh, she I, deserved that moment. I'm man. sorry, but Ezria, no. 
hate it. Hate it. That is, that will forever in my mind go into my one of my least. And the thing with that one is, it was already bad. In all of teen shows, but then they made a couple revelations that made it even worse. But yep, but back to this out. though, uh, like you know. Also, bravo to to Leah Lewis, the actress. Yeah, seriously, Leah Lewis is just phenomenal. Um, I'm I'm very much looking forward to her um her movie at the end of the month. Or no, hers hers comes out on the first. Or no, is hers on the 29th and then Camille's is know. on the first, or is it the other way around? One, but it, either way, th- their movies are back to back, and yeah, I'm super uh, excited. Um, which is weird. Which is um, weird though, because keep an eye out for in that movie, Lewis, she's playing a teen. Mm-hmm. I mean, but you know, they they look which is funny because in 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 uh, Camila's movie, she's finally playing <laughs> yep. an adult. Uh, but yeah, so that's George. George is phenomenal, and you know, uh, even though I don't think it'll happen, I will always yeah. ship George. And Nick Although George and Nick are very cute together. Oh yeah, they're 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 great. Like. I, I approve of all the ships. Like, there's not a ship that I, I like, I despise with all my heart and soul. <coughs> Varchie and Varchie. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, and there is no, there oh is no, God. like, oh. oh, here's this side character who has this awesome relationship with a main character, and we're just gonna ignore them. Oh, poor Kevin. Well, also, poor I was talking Kevin. about the fact of um, <laughs> Veggie and... Oh, and Jarchi? Oh, Jarchi. All right, Pete, Jarchi. I was even a fan for... I love you, I love you for, so uh, much. What would you call it? Valchi? Yeah, yeah, Valchi. Yeah, Valchi. No, I, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, although, like, I feel like Valchi was just proto Jarchi. Uh, but yeah, but no, still. definitely. Definitely. Oh. Uh, but yeah, like, all the ships in here are great. Um, so, yeah, now we're going to spend the last portion talking oh, about oh, oh, oh. Holy shit. This is the big stuff, people. Oh, they went man. places I didn't even okay. expect. So. So. Wow. So let's talk about the resolution of the Tiffany Hudson case real quick, and then we're going to talk about the Lucy Hale case. Okay. So we eventually find out in the mid-season finale that the person who poisoned uh, Lucy Hale was not Lucy Hale. Uh, Tiffany Hudson was poisoned, and we find out the person who poisoned her um, actually meant to poison Ryan, and that person is none other than the younger brother of Lucy Sable, um, Josh. Um, and, uh, so that's, you know, that's revealed. And as, um, Nancy digs into, like, the reasons why Josh, um, why Josh would target Ryan, she sees the, she sees the emails, which are clearly fake, that, like, insult, um, that insult, uh, Lucy, um, on, you know, Ryan's part and what, what drove her to depression. And then eventually we find out that Lucy was not murdered. We find out that Lucy committed suicide. Yep, but but also along the way, like, kind of you find out that Ryan's father kind of sort of pushed her towards the edge. Yeah, be- because, you know, it's, it's, it's cliche, but honestly, it's not. It's cliche because it actually happens. You know, he's from a rich, elite, white family, and she's from a poor, common, other side of the tracks type family um, who can barely make ends meet um, and so you know he didn't want his son to you know sully the family's reputation by taking in a commoner quote unquote which is this, you know the same problem that which Matthew we didn't even bring up Elizabeth but Elizabeth um, is an awesome character in her own right yeah yep yep and it was and her she had a nice mm-hmm. twist when you find out she's an undercover FBI agent that was cool um, but yeah so then, like, 
we find out all these all these mysteries with the Hudson family. But there's still some like little things here and there that aren't making sense, like the fact that Nancy specifically remembers her parents. Yeah, like burying and burn burn um burning no burying the it will um burying something. And they're like and, and then and then also finding yeah. Lucy's Cuban. dress, and then the dad admitting the that attic, he burned yeah. it, and then to quote unquote protect her. Yep. Yeah, and so we it's just like, what the fuck do the Drews have to do with Lucy Sable? Um, Lucy Sable, and then we find out that Kate, um, Nancy's mom, was Lucy's guidance counselor, and they had a you know a very like strong friendship and relationship, like student teacher relationship, because you know um, like. Lucy would come to Kate with all her problems, especially like the stuff with the Hudsons and having to deal with that, being in love with Ryan, but like the world being against both of them. Um, and so it's like, okay, but and, that still doesn't make sense to why Lucy would haunt. And then we get like a little bit muddy where we think that they're going somewhere where we find out that uh, the dad's new girlfriend, who's also a cop. Well, uh, Look, are she, were I they know, dating? They, 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 they I know they kissed each other, a couple times. Were they dating? We saw them kiss a couple times, yeah. and mm -hmm. he says, I w was going to tell you about us. Yeah, so they were dating. Okay, so yeah, Karen, fucking Karen, uh, she is actually like Lucy's childhood best friend. Um, and so she was basically working to put Carson behind bars because she believed that Carson was responsible because we find out that Carson used to be her for the Hudson family. If you guys have never watched a gangster movie and you do not know what a fixer is, a fixer is somebody who uh, takes care of the problems that the rich family are dealing with, that ties up the loose ends, makes sure certain people are sleeping with the fishes. And so... For a long time, and she's like, oh shit, dad, you killed Lucy. I can't let you get away with this. And so it ends up getting Carson put behind bars. But then she realizes, oh shit, now there's way more to this. You stopped being involved with them before that even happened. So there's no way you could have done that. So she gets her dad out. Um, and then there's all this mystery about like Lucy finding out about different things from this like weird rich people eyes wide shut party and so it's like did one of them kill her all these different twists and turns and then we get to uh, one of the uh, final episodes of the season the, the third to last episode uh, where um, they do the trial to defend to like clear Carson of the charges and we find out, like I said before, Lucy committed suicide and that Kate, Drew, and Carson were there. Um, which, which explains why they would have the dress. Um, but, big ass fucking twist. That's not all. So, we saw that Lucy kept trying to talk to Ryan prior to the Sea Queen thing. But Ryan, like, had to avoid her because of the family pressure. And, you know, this clearly made her sad and depressed. And at first you think that's like because she was so deeply in love with him, it it, it, it made her feel bad that, you know, he would, he didn't want, it, it seemed like he didn't want anything to do with her. Nope. We find it's out worse. that it's there is a we biological reason for her acting a little. Yep off her rocker, and it turns out that Lucy Sable was pregnant in the year 1999. Exactly 20 years ago. Do the math for a second, people. <laughs> Let that sink in. Do the math. Who else do we know? That was born in 1999. 
Did you think about it? Yeah. It's fucking Nancy. Holy shit. It's fucking Nancy. And she gives the baby to the Drews and is like, you know, protect her from the Hudsons. I don't want her around them. They're going to corrupt her. Now, can you please hold my baby for a minute? Yep. And then she jumps off the fucking cliff to her death. Now, I want to know how they ended up getting the dress. Did they, like, fish it out of the, like... I'm con- she didn't take the dress off, did she? Did, or did I she think she did. Off? Okay, that, yeah, I was gonna say that's the only way they could have gotten the dress after she, uh, like, after she jumped, because like, oh, no um, been able that's to right. It, uh, uh, she went to uh, what's it? she got changed? Remember? Oh yeah, 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 right. Oh yeah, because because uh, like she called Kate in a panic, and then Kate. Helped her. She, Kate came and she got her. Like she even went to the yeah yeah to the place to the... that apparently Nancy has a childhood connection to, which apparently I yep. didn't know this, but that woman and that house are like key Nancy Drew figures from the classic stories. Yep. Hopefully, we'll get to see her again because I think mm-hmm. she popped up like twice. Yep. Uh, so yeah, we find out that Nancy is not only Lucy Staples' daughter, but she is also, by extension, Ryan mm-hmm. Hudson's daughter. Holy shit. Holy shit. And, you know, that's a lot for Lucy to... Or I said Lucy. That's a lot for um, Nancy to process. That's a lot for Ryan to process. That's a lot for everybody to process. Um... And then towards the end of the show, um, you know, um, the Drew crew were trying to do a ritual to, like, get the spirits to leave them alone. And, well, they first did um, a spell to know, try to find did, um, uh, Lucy's bones to help, to help Carson. Mm-hmm. Yep, and then as payment, they, they demanded... Uh, they they demanded Marvin blood, and thankfully they didn't go after Bess. Uh, they you know went after Owen instead. Uh, uh, now they cut the ritual. Nancy off was like, "No, you're happened. not taking my new however, boyfriend." Um, uh, but however, Nancy, uh, you should know because the don't ghost was then ghost. like, "Okay, uh, well, uh, you're not gonna give me my one." Body, so I'm going well. to kill all of you now. Uh, which, by the way, like this was not due to the ghost, but uh, when Josh uh, was trying to go after Nancy for revenge for uh, like like not letting him kill Ryan, he ends up killing Owen. Uh, so yeah, R.I.P. Owen. And indeed, and Owen and. Owen oh, so, yeah. died because so, yeah, he would yeah. not give over information about Nancy. Because now mm-hmm. Lucy's brother blames Nancy. But then, like, which this was a really great moment where Lucy got to, like, you know, talk with, um, talk with, um, when Nancy got to talk with Lucy's mom. And with Josh, Ooh. the moment with Lucy's mom. Yeah, because uh, uh, she like has dementia. She had a lucid like moment where she's like, oh my god, you're my daughter and you're my granddaughter and didn't know you for 19 years? Yeah. And and I love that she believes her like, like, right off they, that because she looks just I like didn't her. even realize this until afterwards, but they've, they kind of hinted at it because a couple times the mom called her Lucy. Yep. Yeah, I, I noticed. Yeah, I know. I noticed that after the reveal as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then so yeah, like um, the now the spirit like the the cliffhanger of the show, which oh my god, this was a great cliffhanger, despite the fact that this wasn't the originally intended ending, was that every single one of the Drew crew was haunted by a different mm-hmm. vision of their own death. 
So they're all gonna fucking die. What? George yeah. and Nick were this shown crazy. drowning this show in the truck. In their car. Yeah, in their yeah, um, in their, in their, Ace in their was, uh, vehicle. Ace um, was shown best on yeah. a meat hook. Be- Ace was hang yeah, he was hanging, right? Yeah, he was hanging from a meat hook. And then uh like Bess like burned alive in her like new penthouse. Like holy shit. I forget what they showed with Nancy. Nancy. What was Nancy's? Was the same thing that happened with her mother. Oh yeah, where she jumped off. The- That's right, because it went full circle. Because like it, op- the show opens up with the-, the shot of Lucy jumping off the cliff, um, and the show ends with Nancy jumping off the the vision of Nancy jumping off the cliff. Perfect mm-hmm. circle. That that was great. Which uh, you that hinted at it, so but the elephant in the room. This show had to end early because of the pandemic. But honestly, you couldn't yeah. really tell. But, yeah, uh, but that was yeah, that was a fantastic ending. I mean, Legacy is the same thing. Like they which, they've been able to make really good endings, which makes me like have a lot of faith in the Arrowverse. Which shows you know well, what is the are, weird uh, thing? Ending soon. I didn't um, even think about this until someone brought it up. But this is kind of in a similar vein to when the writer strike happened several years ago. Where the shows yeah, then good. had to rush. Like, mm-hmm. uh, for instance, the one with here with Heroes and, and then Lost. also Supernatural. Those are the big ones. It had to go from 22 episodes to 16. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yeah. Um, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, well, any predictions for next? Nancy, Brian. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Real quick, I—I I mean, we were getting close to time, but yeah, yeah. Real quick. Um, so I mean, obviously, we're gonna—we're definitely gonna have to call in on the Than family, um, to help out with this whole situation. Hopefully, this means we'll get more involvement from George's mom, and maybe we'll get to see like her grandma because her grandma. Oh, that—that that would be nice. Um, because like, I feel like we need the big guns here, and apparently, and hopefully, the grandma, grandma can be like is. someone that we know, like a known actress. That would be cool, but but yes, the yeah, other family yeah, and that, maybe develop a couple more Martins and stuff. Yeah, I I, I know I know that Bess is going to end up making a dumb decision just just to you know further solidify herself as a Marvin, and um, we'll, um, when her sucks, and Elizabeth are probably going to break up. Have to... It's it's gonna suck, but she has to make mistakes in order to get better. So yeah, I feel like it's for her and really. I think that um, Nace is gonna become a thing, but Jay doesn't. Yeah, Nancy and Ace. They, I don't know. They seem there are too, a few moments here and there where it's just like they're right? really close. Like uh, when she has no one else to go, nowhere else to go to. Her first instinct is him. Yeah, that that that's but a, that's anyway, a, that's uh, like you said, we're short on time, yeah, so I'll just know. say all of that, and I honestly don't know how to predict with this show, honestly, and and my final yeah, thoughts is that I really liked well. the show; it was really good. I can't wait to see more. It was definitely a big shock, and I love it, honestly, and I can't believe that I'm saying that I love it, but and I can't wait yeah. for more. Yeah. Yeah, biggest surprise, biggest surprise of the season so far, um, not including the show we are going to review next because that was like, holy shit! Um, like Brian, I'm gonna tell you right now, you're gonna need to spread that watch over the course of a few days. I did it in one, and it destroyed well, me. Well, I marathoned so like in one. season one of Big Little Lies in like two days. No, but like big, I'm not. It's not. It doesn't destroy you in terms of twist or like a big thing. It it'll hit. It hits you. It beats you. But anyway, it, speaking it of, you down emotionally. Uh, if you're done and talking me, about, you don't want your to overall that. thoughts. Um, oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, so it's 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 phenomenal. Highly recommend it. Uh, one of the some of the best twists ever. Uh, like from this season. 
Um, uh, no. Don't let the CW tag fool you. Uh, you need to watch it. Uh, it's not available on Netflix, but if you have CBS All Access, it is on C- it'll be on CBS All Access. And all of it is currently on the CW app for free. So you can watch it there. Uh, so yeah, um, with that uh, with that out of the way, let's get to plugs. Um, what's coming up for every, uh, both of us on you know Ask Me Blair for Brian Blair on YouTube. Uh, I'll be I'll be real quick. Mine's actually going to be quick. Uh, I, I've decided that uh, once a month I'm just going to take one week off every month uh, to just make sense and recharge. I feel like that's that's necessary. Especially because I, I like I've been going like a mile a minute uh, with all my shit. So uh, this week was my off week for April. Um, so I didn't really do anything. Um, so uh, but uh, coming up, uh, we've got uh, you know the usual stuff, all my anime stuff, and uh, one day at a time's finale, um, legends, uh, and I'm pretty sure that's it. A uh, Harley, yeah, Harley. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. And DuckTales. So, yeah. Uh, All right. Uh, me. Me. Uh, also light week, but just because I have sleeping schedules off and just forgot about shows being on and all that. And so typically what's probably going to happen next week, unless I don't forget anything, is um, this weekend probably going to try to do another late Harley review. And then Monday... I kind of gave up on Roswell, not because it's not bad, but I just kept missing episodes. So I'm just going to do season review. Yeah, same. And then uh, Tuesday is Legends because that's my shit, and I'm going to keep doing that until it's over. And then uh, Wednesdays, there isn't anything, is there? Uh, Nope. Uh, nothing oh yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, so I'll probably be doing Supergirl on Sunday so myself. Well. Uh, but which is going to be really cool because that's the episode that Melissa directed. And then uh, in the dark, if yeah. I don't forget again. Um, oh yeah, totally and uh, then <laughs> Harley Quinn. Yeah, thank you. And thank uh, you. then our totally next show. That one. Yeah, which leads us to next week, uh, Channel Chaser. It is going to be the Hulu original uh, original miniseries, Little Fires Everywhere, starring Reese Witherspoon and Kerry Washington. Holy shit, you guys. Like, I I read reviews saying, you know, um, like when it first came out, saying that it was a mess. So I was initially going to skip it. uh, But then I, like, it, you know, became highly recommended by someone that I, like, love and trust deeply. And she said, you're going to love it. Trust me, it's phenomenal. And let me tell you, I have never hated a fictional character more in my entire life than I've hated. That has me really character. excited. Um, um, it should, dude. You're gonna be yelling at the TV. It's like, oh, Carrie Washington is also pretty horrible, but like, not as bad. Um, it, it's, it's it's really good though. The character drama is. Top notch, on point. All the performances are phenomenal. There's an interesting twist here. Nothing like earth shattering, but really, really good. The uh, oh, the character acting is just so fucking great. And there, it's, there's so many deep implications with it. I cannot wait to talk about it. It's going to be hard to keep time with that one because there's so much to talk about. Uh, but yeah, uh, little fires everywhere. Look forward to that one. As you can see, I'm very jazzed about it because like. That show, like, had me just shaking with, like, just tension, anger, excitement. So nice. And the intro is bomb. Um, Yeah, so thank you uh, for joining us for this Nancy episode, and hopefully you'll join us next week. Little Fires Everywhere. But for now, 